Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to customize the names of your IO labels in Logic Pro. So this can be really helpful if you have a certain set of microphones or preamps that are always connected to your inputs, or maybe you use the IO plugin to mix with hardware like I do, where you are sending audio out of uh, Logic using the IO plugin to specific pieces of hardware, and then you have a return for that audio going back into Logic. So instead of having to just remember the number for each input and output, and you know, for example, for me, input and output seven and eight, go to my Rupert Neve Portico two that I use for mastering. So rather than having to just memorize all of the gear that's connected to the inputs and outputs, you can give them labels and it just makes this a little bit easier. So to get started, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to mix, and you're gonna go down to IO labels. And you'll see I already have a bunch of labels here that I've added. If you need to reset all of your labels, you can just go up to this reset uh, drop down menu here, and then you can say reset all labels, or you can just reset the input or output labels. So I'll say reset all labels just to get started. Now I always use input one with my Lewitt Ray mic for my voiceover. I could name the input with the mic name, like it'd be especially helpful if you have like a drum setup, like kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, three toms. You can name each input, uh, you know, based on the mic that you're using. If it's like a permanent setup that you you don't move, or in my case, I'm gonna list the name of the preamp and uh, voice processor that I use, which is a DBX 286S. So on input one, we could use just the channel name, uh, the name that's provided by the driver, or give it a username. So here what I'm going to do is you get a long and a short name, uh, and whether you see the long name or the short name is going to depend on where you're viewing the name of it, and I'll show you this in just a second here. So for long, I'll call this like Mike in DBX 286S, but then for short, I'll just call this 286S, okay? And so just so you can see how this works, if I open the mixer now and I go to an audio channel here, you can see on the input, if I go to input one, it says input one, mic in DBX 286S. That's the long name, but on the actual input tab here, it says 286S, the short name. So that's one way you can do this. You can assign microphones or preamps if you like. So let's go back to our IO labels. And one way I use this is I use it to label all of my mixing hardware and mastering hardware. So for example, Inputs seven and eight, I use as a return for my portico. So I could give this uh, the long name, you just double click, of portico out one, or I could put left if I want to, hit tab, and then I'll just call this portico one for short, then portico out two, and then portico two, right? Now you may be a little confused. These are inputs, but I'm calling them outputs. The input is the input of my audio interface, whereas the input of the audio interface is receiving signal from the output of the hardware. So just keep that in mind. And I'm using um, an Apogee Symphony IO for my audio interface. So you can see that I've got 20 different inputs here. Uh, really, I only have eight uh, mic or line inputs here. The rest of these are digital for like ADAT use and stuff. Um, so another thing I could add on here is uh, maybe I want to assign my Golden Age Comp 2A's returns. Um, so I've got two of those. So I'll say Comp 2A out one, and I could just say Comp 2A one, Comp 2A out two. And then again, I'm just pressing tab to go over and then Comp 2A two, right? So those are those are the returns. Those are what's coming into the inputs. Let's go down to the outputs. And so for outputs, I don't actually have 18 outputs. I really only have eight. These are the only ones that are being used. So once again, seven and eight, whoops, I selected all of those. Uh, seven and eight are used for the portico out. So this is how I'm getting signal out to the portico. So what I could call this is portico in one, portico uh, one, portico in two, Portico two. And then for five and six, we said these were the comp two A's, comp 
to a two. Okay, so I've got all of those labeled. Now, one other thing you're gonna wanna do is if any of your hardware is being used in stereo, like I can use my comp two A's individually as two mono channels, or I can use them as a stereo pair. And the same goes for the portico. What you're gonna wanna do is come down to your stereo inputs and outputs and label these as well. So again, five and six and seven and eight. Five and six, we'll call this comp two A one and two, or we'll say in one and two, or actually out one and two. There we go. And I'll just call this comp 2A, 1, and 2. And then 7, 8, I, call, I can call this portico out 1 and 2, and then portico 1 and 2. And then I can go down to my outputs, output 5 and 6, 7 and 8. So 5 and 6, we'll call comp 2A in 1 and 2, and then comp 2A, 1 and 2. And then for... The portico, we'll call this portico in one and two, and then just portico one and two. And it's okay if like the short names are, you know, are kind of the, are the same for the input and output. It's not really going to matter. This is only going to show if I like, a, you know, select like an output on the channel strip itself. Um, really where these are going to show up and be important is in the IO plugin. So let's take a look at that next. So I've already got my DBX286 routed here. Let's say I want to add the IO plugin in mono. And with the IO plugin, I want to use one of my comp two A's. So I can select output and you'll see comp two A one and two uh, comp two A two. So this is going out of my symphony IO out of logic and into the first comp two A. And then we're going to return that signal from comp two A, the output of comp two A here. And we're going to make that go to input five on my audio interface. So labeling your I.O. is not necessary to use the I.O. plugin, but I just find it uh, way easier to identify what is what, especially when you have a lot of inputs and outputs and you're not using a patch bay. Um, and by the way, if you're using a patch bay, there's really no need for you to do this because with the patch bay, you can hook anything up to anything. You can hook any input to any output and any output to any input anyway. So all of that labeling is done on the patch bay. This is specifically for setups where your inputs and outputs are like hardwired to certain pieces of gear and they're never changed. So on the stereo out, I've loaded up the IO plugin in stereo. Let's say I want to use my portico. So I go to the output. Oh, there's the portico in one and two and then portico out one and two. So that's how you can customize your IO labels in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.